what's going on everybody this is cody the home theater hobbyist and today i want to talk to you about the heiko auroras these speakers that you see around me but i will be mentioning my clips reference premiere line just a bit because there's some sound similarities between those and uh these speakers that are actually kind of surprised me a little bit but i'll talk about that a little bit more in the sound quality section now heiko is a german manufacturer they have been in business since 1949 but these speakers or this brand rather is actually relatively new here in the u.s uh through exclusive retailer audio advice they arrived around 2020 2021 so they're actually really really new here but i want to give a shout out to audio advice because they sent me this nice 7.1 setup so if you want to purchase anything for your home theater or hi-fi needs use those links in the description below because they will take you to audio advice's page but they sent me this nice 7.1 setup and we'll start over there on the far right that's the aurora 200 it is a two-way bookshelf speaker it's got the 1.1 inch fluctus tweeter along with a five inch bass woofer down there at the bottom next to that is the 300 the same 1.1 inch tweeter with a 6.7 inch woofer at the bottom and right here we've got the big floor stander or tower speaker this is a three-way design there's a smaller version known as the 700 but this is the aurora 1000 it's got a 6.7 inch mid bass woofer it's also got or mid-range woofer rather the 1.1 inch tweeter and dual 8 inch bass woofers down here on the bottom now speaking of bass, here on the floor I've got the subwoofer. This is the 30A. It is a 12 inch front firing subwoofer and it is rear ported. Next to me on the left side is the center channel. This is the center 30. It has the same 1.1 inch tweeter in the center and dual 5 inch drivers on each side of the speaker. Now as you can see again i've got all of this here i've got an entire 7.1 setup and i did test them out now they do have two colors black and white and i like both of them but honestly i think i prefer the white just a little bit better because you get nice contrast between the drivers and that front face but i like them because the front face extends up the front and across the top of the speaker and there is an aurora logo on the back and i like it i think it looks really cool and nice and modern there's also the heiko logo on the bottom and i just think they've done a really good job of how these speakers look but they do come with a nice acoustically transparent grill that I have right here. It's a black grill for all the speakers and they have a Heiko logo here on the bottom and they do magnetically attach to the speaker. So all you have to do is just snap them on just like that, whether it be the speakers or the subwoofer. Now, all of the speakers are ported. The bookshelf speakers and center channel have a single rear port while the towers and subwoofer have dual rear ports. All the speakers also have five-way binding posts, but the towers and the Aurora 300s have dual binding posts, so you can buy wire and buy amp them if you want to. Now, on the rear of the 30A sub, it has all the connections and controls that one would expect, including input, volume adjustment, frequency adjustment, phase adjustment, auto on off, and a main power switch. Now let's talk about my testing and experience. The first thing I did with these speakers was I did break them in for about 100 hours. Now I will say I didn't notice any difference between when I started the break-in period and at the end of the break-in period. But to be fair, I did not really sit down and listen to these while I was breaking them in. I would start a movie or play some music and then just sort of leave the room. So I'll just say that. But after I finished that, I ran the room calibration software on my AVR, the Odyssey Multi-EQ uh, room calibration software, just to kind of set the levels and set the distances to my main listening position and I didn't tweak anything with the exception of the subwoofer and I'll talk about that in a minute but I didn't tweak anything and I started watching movies and what I was looking for was I wanted to see just how well the center channel would handle um, dialogue with these big towers and the subwoofer playing and I chose a few movies that were you know 5.1 7.1 including The Dark Knight, Interstellar, Avatar, Trading Places, Jurassic Park just all of these different movies that are action movies just to see how the center channel would hold up and I have to say I was impressed the center channel held up well it did not get drowned out by the towers or the subwoofer and I was happy to hear that but not only was I happy to hear that I was just happy by just the way these speakers sound overall it is a nice balanced detail sound that's a little bit bright but not forward but it is a lively and Honestly, soundtracks, dialogue, everything sounded nice, crisp, and clean. And I, I have to say, I was sitting here, I was listening to these, and I was watching The Dark Knight, and I was just impressed by how well the sound design was with The Dark Knight. Because 
in the, I guess it's chapter 21, when they're capturing the Joker, uh, there are some subtle scenes where it's nice and quiet, but then there's those big dynamic scenes with explosions, and this setup handled it easily. The bass was there and subtle when it needed to be, but thunderous when it needed to be. Now, I did turn the bass up an extra notch just to get it to be right around, let's say 80 dB at my main listening position. Uh, typically, I run right around 77, maybe 78 dB, but I did turn it up a notch just to get a little bit more bass presence. Another thing I noticed while watching The Dark Knight is in chapter 21, there's a scene where a helicopter is being taken down. It goes from up in the air to down on the ground. And I noticed that height effect with this setup. It's not full on Dolby Atmos, you know, overhead effects, but there is a lot of height to the image with these speakers. Another thing I did while listening to movies was I tested the bookshelf speakers, both the 200 and 300 as side surrounds to see which one I preferred. And honestly, I prefer the 300 as a side surround because it's bigger. It's got a bigger cabinet, bigger driver. It's got a, a fuller, weightier presence and more depth of bass to it compared to the 200. So I would use the 300s as side surrounds and the 200s as rear surrounds if you're thinking about buying a 7.1 setup. The 200s do work, so you can still buy those, but uh, I prefer the 300s as my side surrounds and even rears because I tried them as rears as well. And they just have a bit more there than the 200. And that brings me over to the 1000 Tower. This is my favorite speaker in this lineup. I like three-way speakers, but I like this one especially because they have tuned it very, very well. The transition between the tweeter, the mid-bass driver, and the woofers is nice and smooth. You can't even really tell that it is transitioned, and that's a good thing. There's often times with two-way speakers that you can actually hear the transition between, let's say, the tweeter and that mid-bass driver. Well, with this one, it is nice and smooth. And speaking of the tweeter, the tweeter is the same between all of these speakers and it has some sort of in my mind Klipsch reference premiere vibes I mentioned it earlier in this video that I have the reference premiere line from 2015 2016 I've got the RP 260 F floor standing speakers the 440 C center channel and two pairs of the RP 150 M's that I use as side surrounds and rear surrounds and I like the speaker but a lot of people or I should say some people have been somewhat critical of that line saying that it is overly bright to the extent that is actually harsh in that trouble regime and that high end and this tra or this tweeter actually has a little bit of a brightness to it it's not neutral it's a little bit bright but it's not overly bright i would say as the clips reference premiere line is or at least that circle or that vintage of it is and that's a good thing it has that clarity it has that detail but it's not harsh and another thing they've done is the sound is actually a bit laid back when you compare it to that Clips Reference Premiere um, tweeter. That's a bit more forward, a bit more in your face. This is a little bit more laid back. And so I think that actually adds to the fact that it's clean and clear, but not harsh. It's not pushing at you. It's not punching at you, right? But that also leads to something that I, I found as well when I was listening to music. There's not as much depth to the image with these speakers. Uh, when I was listening to live concerts, it sounded like the lead singer in the band was basically more or less in the same plane. There wasn't a whole lot of separation with him. And that was kind of one of the drawbacks that I, I thought I was like, hmm, I wish there was just a little bit more there. Now, the overall presentation is nice and lively. I don't want you to think, oh, it's kind of a dull, boring, you know, fall asleep kind of thing. It is nice and lively, but it's not in your face like the Klipsch reference premiere line was. So I think that's a good thing. And if you're kind of thinking between this and like, let's say that line that I have, I'd probably go with the Hiko Auroras because it is clean and clear without being overly in your face. Now, the mid-bass driver, the mid-range, how does it sound? It is nice and neutral. Again, laid back, it's not prominent, uh, but it is nice and neutral and it handles vocals very well. It's nice. I, I, I like this mid-bass driver. I really, really like it. It sounds fantastic. Um, so I think they've done a great job with the mid-bass driver. And the woofers. The 8-inch woofers will play down to 25 hertz. I actually was able to get an audible 25 hertz from my main listening position, so that was cool. But it really comes into its own right around 30 hertz. And when listening to music, I think you can listen to just these. You don't really need a subwoofer. But if you're watching movies, I would definitely add in the subwoofer. This will easily play down to about 25 hertz, and it sounds good. It's nice and detailed, and it'll give you that thunderous bass. Uh, but when listening to music, I think this is good enough. The 300s. Uh, it'll, they'll play down to about 40 hertz or so with their bass, uh, whereas the 
uh, 2 hundreds will play down to about 45 hertz. So there is a little bit there, you know, you gotta decide for yourself which ones you're gonna use there, but they all play bass, it's just how deep they will go. Now, these are not perfect speakers. Like I said, I wish there was more depth to the image, especially when listening to music and live concerts, and the cabinets could probably use a little bit more dampening so that they can be a little bit quieter and give you a cleaner, tighter sound. I mean, they sound good, but there's definitely room for improvement there. But enough about that, enough about all of my impressions here. I'm gonna play a quick audio sample just so you can hear that these do make sound. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Hopefully you enjoyed that audio sample. I didn't want to play too much because I don't want the video pulled down from YouTube, but hopefully you got the chance to hear that these speakers actually do make sound. But overall, this is a very good setup. I really like it and I highly recommend it for home theater. It plays home theater very, very well. You're gonna enjoy yourself listening to these and they're not overly expensive. I think the 1000s are the most expensive at $800 a piece and everything else, you know, is under that. So you can get a very nice home theater setup for not a whole lot of money. And that is a good thing. And you're getting nice, high quality speakers. So I definitely highly recommend it. Uh, the only drawbacks from a sound quality standpoint would be the fact that again, these don't have as much depth of image, like I said, but they do image very well. I didn't say that, but they do image very, very well. And if you're sitting in the sweet spot, it is a nice wide sweet spot. And like I said, they do have nice, uh, height to them, nice verticality to them. So overall, this is a nice setup. The center channel holds its own. The bass definitely plays. It's nice and thunderous. You may have to turn it up a little bit, but it's nice and thunderous. The 300, great surround speaker. The 200 is good as well, but the 300 is a little bit better. And the tower, the 1000 tower is a great speaker. So I don't have any um, thing that would I would say, mm, don't buy those. These are great speakers. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, and also use those links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you next time.